partitions into distinct parts where the smallest part is odd. Should there be something striking for smallest part even? Now let's look at what my companion series has. My companion series has extra factors. What is the role of the extra factor? The role of the extra factor, q to the n, is to insert a column of length n, a single column of length n. Remember previously I was inserting pairs. Now I insert a single column of length n. When I insert a single column of length n, what was previously an odd part, which was the smallest, is now converted into an even part. But it also has this extra factor. This extra factor inserts columns of length n plus 1 in pairs. That also creates smallest part even. So there are two ways of creating smallest part even in this process. Either you do this or you do that. So the smallest part even can occur in two ways. But remember the weight of the partition had minus 1 to the number of parts. So if I view it in this form, the weight is minus 1 to the n. If I view it in this form, the weight is minus 1 to the n plus 1. I have to add the weights I get zero. So partitions with smallest part even are never counted. So this companion to the Ramanujan series still continues to count only partitions with smallest part odd. That's why the two series are equal. So this is a combinatorial proof of the equality of the two series, not a Q series proof. All right. Now I'm going to play this game in another fashion. Okay. Now, on seeing my theorem, I was attending the George Andrews conference at Penn State, Andrews came up to me and said, Krishna, I have a problem in the American Mathematical Monthly many years ago, and my problem goes as follows. Let epsilon e of n denote the number of partitions of n into distinct non-negative parts with smallest part even. And epsilon o is the number of partitions into distinct non-negative parts with number of parts odd. That difference is 1 if n is k squared and 0 otherwise. And I cast it in this identity. Doesn't this mean that smallest part even is interesting? See, George Andrews is asking you this. Of course you have to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> so first thing I said was to George, your theorem and my theorem are equivalent. See, what Andrews is doing is, he wants smallest part even, but he accepts non-negative parts. So here's what we do. Suppose you genuinely take a partition where the smallest part, all parts are positive and the smallest part is even. To such a partition, I will add zero so that it still satisfies the Andrews criterion. But that means it can be counted with weight minus one to the number of parts or minus one to the number of parts plus one. So it's never counted. So what Andrews thought was being counted was never being counted. But if you take a partition where the smallest part is odd, I add a zero to satisfy the Andrews criterion for the smallest part is even. So Andrews is also really counting partitions into distinct parts where smallest part is odd. So I told George Andrews, George, this is your theorem. And he got very angry and he said, no, it is your theorem because I missed it. I came very close to it, but I didn't actually have this theorem. So I'm not going to be a co-author. You can thank me for this identity, but I didn't, I didn't actually get the theorem. So he's a very generous man. But Andrews being who he is, immediately came back and showed me a theorem with a parameter A. He said, my identity holds with the parameter A, and I've got minus A to the K here. So now the question is, what does this mean? So I will tell you what this means. So now we're going to interpret the Andrews theorem. And it's a beautiful result with further weights. You take partitions of an integer n into distinct parts with smallest part odd. And now you put the weight a to the number of odd parts minus 1 to the number of parts. You sum, you get perfect cancellation except at the, um, that's the next slide. You get perfect cancellation except at the perfect squares where you get this. So this is truly amazing because you have an entirely different set of weights on the same set of partitions. 
You have the Ramanujan identity and you have the Andrews identity, but the lacunarity is identical. It looks like the Andrews identity is counting partitions where the smallest part is even, but if you actually look at it, you will find that they are never counted because the weight is zero. So the emphasis here is on smallest part of one. So in conclusion, let me just say the following. So um, one question that arises is, is there a combinatorial proof of these two weighted partition theorems of mine, which will reduce, both, by the way, both theorems reduce to that special case A equal to one, they are identical. Is there a combinatorial uh, involution which will finally only select the squares? And the group in Nankai has succeeded in doing so. William Chen and his group have found such a combinatorial proof. But now I, I, I pose a broader problem. <coughs> you have nice examples of these lacunarity results. Euler's pentagonal numbers theorem, the Gauss triangular series, and so on. Are there interesting ways to go to subsets of these sets of Euler, Gauss, others, such that on these subsets, when you put the parity condition, you will still get lacunarity. But it may not be the same theta sequence. It, it, in one case, pentagonals were replaced by squares. In another case, you have triangles. But the whole idea is, you want lacunarity, but you want either a theta series or a false theta series. So I'm now, I have many more examples, but due to lack of time, I'm not getting into these. But this is an interesting uh, uh, question by itself. How do you preserve lacunarity? by going into subsets, but the way in which you go to subsets must be not with too many artificial conditions, but with simple natural conditions. Thank you very much.